When you hear the word hybrid, do you have mental images of a Toyota Prius bumbling its way down the interstate and slowing everyone down in the left lane? I know that I do. But good news, hybrids are no longer categorized just as boring electric vehicles. They now are associated with cigar styles. And today's smoke that we are reviewing right now is one of these hybridized cigars. Here we have Sky Moon by Warped Cigars, a Corona-sized Bellicoso from Nicaragua that is fairly rare. You really don't see a lot of Bellicosos with that rounded cap coming in this ring gauge. Now on to ingredients, where you will find a shade-grown Corojo wrapper from Nicaragua, a binder that is undisclosed, but uh, Nicaraguan as well, and then Nicaraguan Puro Fun in Corojo 99 and Criollo 98 filler ingredients. Warp Cigar's founder, Kyle Gillis, also claims that this cigar has Medio Tiempo tobacco in it, in the filler that is, which is the most tippy top leaves off the tobacco plant, which don't always produce. So they're pretty special and, well, that you can't always get them, and that they're really small and spicy typically, because they get the most sunlight. Aesthetics on the cigar are well, a lot of fun. I like a little Corona Vitola, and finding it in a Bellicoso Vitola is pretty special. I also find the band on the cigar to be very appealing. It's just wonderful. It's also textured, so yeah, it's got a nice little stamping to it. Uh, very, very nice as well as the color. Nice, clean sheen, a little oil to it, not too much. And construction feels tight. Not too tight, but still a little on the snugger side. The only construction complaint that I have is right here near the foot on this particular stick. The seam is just a little bit off and um, it folded in a strange way. It should be tucked tightly underneath and it's kind of exposed. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a dingarooski, but not much. Now, as for the whole hybrid side of the story, that has everything to do with the hybridization of two cigar blends that were already existing in the Warped Cigars portfolio. Warped has been selling Sky Flower and Moon Garden for some time now, and founder Kyle Gallus always liked to have his own proprietary sticks rolled up for him just for personal smoking pleasure because he liked some of the flavors from one and some from the other and he had them both mixed up for him and it was just something he liked to smoke and occasionally hand out to friends and whatnot. Nothing for sale. But this all changed at the PCA 2023 trade show where yours truly was in attendance and when I met with Kyle, I was able to discuss procuring some of these sticks they only made 500 boxes of them. And after speaking with uh, Claro founder Michael, well, we kind of got our hands on a few of them for you. And here's what we got. The wrapper's a little bit on the sweet side, almost like a really dark, doughy beer bread smell. There's a little bit of Corojo spice to it, but nothing super peppery. Again, this is a shade-grown Corojo wrapper, so it will be much milder than what we're accustomed to in the sun-grown varietals. The foot is very intriguing. A lot of spice tea notes going on there. A little bit of sweetness and a dryness, which is kind of similar to the wrapper, but I get that it's, a, again, a sweet kind of dry. Nothing syrupy, sticky. And lit cold pulls have a little tingle. Just a tingle of vanilla to it. Very little sweetness. Interesting papery, cardboardy like aftertaste. And a distinct note of Szechuan pepper. A little bit of spice to it. A little peppery in that sense. Um, not your typical black or white pepper though, which is interesting. Let's fire it up and see where this takes us. Shall we? Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Where are we? Uh, 
get any further into this cigar, let me explain a few things about it. First of all, in case you are wondering why I haven't gotten around to smoking this cigar since we scored it right after PCA 2023, it's because I did smoke it and I did not feel that it was ready for review. It still tasted kind of green to me. It wasn't really ready. And so, being that I had more than one stick, I said, you know what, let's wait until around New Year, which is about where we are, just a couple of days away from Christmas 2023 right now. So that's where we are right now with this blend. The other thing you need to know about this cigar is that I recommend cutting it a little bit on the aggressive end. And by aggressive end, I mean further up on the shoulder. This is a bellicoso, so it's tapered. And if you cut a, just a nib off the end, you're not going to get enough smoke, I find. It's just a small Vitola. It draws, but not extremely well because it is fairly tightly wrapped and bound. So just keep that in mind that if you cut conservatively, you may need a secondary cut if you don't get a pull or at least one that's not fluid enough for you. Well, I know that you're supposed to be part sky flower, but that's not the type of flowering we had in mind, damn it. Ah. I'm glad I waited and let this one age for another four or five months. Much better than the first smoke. Much cleaner, more round, more balanced tasting, and not as sharp. It still is sharp on the retrohale. There's definitely that Szechuan peppercorn note on the nose, as well as a hefty bit of that Corojo spice that we know. But that Criollo, 98, earthy, kind of sweeter round flavor comes through and makes for a very nice finish to the cigar. It leaves a very sweet coating on the palate that maybe four or five, 10 seconds later, you can still detect, especially on the back part of the mouth and the tongue. You, you really just kind of coats it almost like a syrup. It's pretty pleasant. And with the spice notes that I'm picking up right now on the first few minutes of the cigar, makes for a very nice beginning. Again, a lot of aged and weighted on this one. That is just right on and then some in my book right now. Very, very tasty, shade-grown Corojo subtleness. And the Criollo is really shining at this moment in the cigar. Mm, sticky, sweet. Again, that, that beer bread, that sweet beer bread taste is really what I'm getting. It's like there's a splash of molasses in it. Very wonderful. You know what's also wonderful is how the burn has fixed itself. I'm one of those guys who is not trigger happy at all with the torch lighter. Some people see you know, a wave in the cigar or a little bit of a flake forming or just an uneven burn line of some sort, and they just touch up, touch up, touch up, you know, torch it, fix it. Not me. I like to see if a cigar will fix itself because that kind of is a testament to the construction of the smoke, but also just to kind of see how it was, you know, formulated. And also if it does really cause an issue, then you do a touch up along the way as necessary. Well, as you can clearly tell, smoke production is not an issue with this cigar, even though construction was a little bit of a problem. I did eventually have to touch up that back section of the cigar after ashing off the majority of the first third. Speaking of first thirds, Let's discuss that for a moment, shall we? As you move through the first third and your palate adjusts to all of those sweet beer bread molasses-like notes, and your olfactory senses upstairs in the schnoz begin to recognize more and more of the Corojo shade-grown spice that's inside this cigar, that medio tiempo sun-grown itty-bitty leaf that I mentioned earlier that's inside the filler, begins to ratchet things up again and again. Each retrohale gets a little spicier than the last, which for Corojo fans like myself is a delight. Very nice little contrast to the sweetness going on inside of the cigar. Nothing outrageous, just nice, even, sweet and spicy concoction. 
thrown in with a little bit of a salted roasted peanut taste. Not buttered peanuts, but like the whole, you know, peanut still in the shell that's salted and roasted, you know, when you go to Logan's Roadhouse and you throw that crap on the floor. Yeah, that kind of salted peanut taste. Not prominent, just a little bit toward that back part of the palate after you exhale, but it is notable. Okay, so Corojo Spice fans will rejoice. Oh, ho, 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 ho. man, the retro hails are spicy. And that's part of that Navio Tiempo that I made mention of just a few moments ago. There's also more of that Szechuan pepper-like note. It just kind of comes and goes, but when it comes to something comparable, that's probably the closest I could find. Maybe a little bit of black pepper, but this is a little bit more heat behind the cigar than just that. There's also that peanut taste that's becoming a little more oily, kind of coats the palate on every corner. And with that note, you get salted taste. Again, it's like peanut butter. That's, that, that's probably the closest thing I could compare it to right now. Still not the most primary flavor profile, but it's there, hard to ignore. Final third flavor profiles are very floral. There's a cedar note that comes with these aromatics and flavors. This provides for a very nice little finishing transition that lightens things up when typically cigars get a little darker. And we'll have to see if that continues as we move further through and into parting puffs. But right now, it's a much lighter note than before. The spice is still there, but the sweetness has died back and it's a little drier. And as you can tell, smoke production continues to be fairly solid. I'm glad that I was a little more aggressive with my cut on this one round. All right, beautiful band. It's time to say goodbye. Whoop, that was easy. <laughs> Parting puffs get sweet again. They're like Criollos, letting you know, oh, I'm still here and I still want to party for a bit before you uh, put me out. Not so much peanuts anymore, more of a heavier, darker roasted walnut flavor. And a little charry too, almost like uh, burnt wet wood, which lets me know it's time to put this blend down. So what did I think of the Sky Moon? Not phenomenal. But good, it had its issues, more in the construction side than in the flavor profile side. There was one medium-sized touch-up that had to be taken almost through the first third and into the second. And then the cigar went out on me twice. I had built a nice ash both times. It was burning beautifully and then suddenly went out on me. So I had to tap off the ash, start all over. Fortunately, unlike certain cigars that taste kind of funky when you relight them, this wasn't so bad after a couple of puffs. It, it mellowed back out and got right back into where it left off. So not a deal breaker, but still eh, not so great. Ash itself though, outside of that start and that touch up has been pretty good. It's held a nice one and has burned fairly evenly outside of that issue I had. It's also burned nice and cool. I personally dig this Vitola too. You don't see a lot of corona size bellicosos. So I like this, you know, short smoke. And by short, you know, I've been puffing away for almost an hour and a half now. The flavor profiles have been good. That Szechuan pepper note has been fun. I like the Criollo sweetness, that little bit of peanut, salted peanut pop here and there was fun. Like that it transitions back to the Criollo and it just does smoke fairly clean throughout. Speaking of smoke, the smoke production on the cigar has been outstanding despite me being a little bit concerned about that and how tightly it was wrapped and uh, filled. The wrapper itself though is kind of a fragile thing. It is a shade grown Corojo so it's kind of delicate. I found it flaking out in areas and um, you know just scuffing up a little too easily. Luckily the cigar band came off very cleanly so didn't have any issues in that regard. And at this point in the smoke, I find myself giving it a 4.1 out of five stars. Tasty, wouldn't go as far as to call it super memorable or anything, but a good one. It benefits from age too. 
I'm glad that I waited for a while. And I think that if you pick up a fiver of these cigars, you too should smoke one and determine for yourself whether or not it's worth smoking the rest of them or just set them down and gradually getting through them in the next six months to a year. I think that that might help some of the flavor profiles and potentially as the cigar ages further, maybe help with some of the combustion issues. Yeah, tasty. Good. I like it. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.